Real freedom is here. Okay, let's go. Eagle Radio. New voices amplified. Eagle Radio. Real freedom is here. Okay, let's go. Eagle Radio. New voices amplified. Eagle Radio. Right, uh, welcome to Ear Ground, and my name is uh, Boaz Gomete, aka King Boaz. And uh, the world is seized with the coronavirus, uh, every nation is trying to find answers or preserve lives of those that are already uh, infected. And uh, today we're going to be having a discussion on the COVID 19, looking at Zimbabwe in particular, the impact that it has had on the arts. Uh, the impact that it has had uh, even on the general uh, masses and how uh, can we try and uh, look at the recovery part? How do we recover from such a, a setback? So on my panel today, I have uh, Bimbai and uh, Innocent. I will allow them to introduce themselves and uh, we will honor ladies. Uh, Bimbai, yes, maybe if you can you say that. tell us. <laughs> I knew you would say that, but you know, Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Boaz, and thank you so much, Agron, for having us. Uh, my name is Bimbai Simoto. I'm a musician uh, slash dancer, choreographer. I am an all-rounder artist. I'm based in the Netherlands, and um, I was in Zimbabwe two months ago, maybe less, no, a month ago, and uh, yeah. I'm always in the country, so I basically have a lot of information concerning the on-the-ground situation. So. I'm happy to be here. We're going to talk about the COVID-19, uh, and uh, I'll tell you some of the stuff happening here and also the stuff I hear from my family. I think that's the whole point when we're here. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. You know, over okay, to you. Know. <clears throat> thank you very much, Ekron, for having me. Um, my name is Innocent Musomali. I think on Facebook, they know me Innocent B. Musomali. I always like... Uh, in bikes photos, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect that. <laughs> um, I live in South Africa. Uh, I'm working, uh, I mean, in tourism industry. I'm not an artist. I hope I'll be able to contribute about this COVID-19 regarding what I think, uh, I mean, uh, <clears throat> regarding this, um, the, the state of the nation and everything else. Um, not so much often uh, in Zimbabwe, but I do have family that is still in Zimbabwe, and I'm a bit informed about what's happening today. I think right. uh, uh, Yeah, thank you so much. All right, uh, so we start off, maybe we can come to you, Vibai, and say, uh, what has been the effect of uh, of the coronavirus on, on the arts? We're seeing that there are shutdowns, or first of all, before the shutdown, there was a limited number of people that could be in one place. I think it was 100, and then it went down, I think, to 50, and then the shutdown starts tomorrow, which is Monday. Uh, uh, so what has been the effect on the arts industry? Well, I'll start with the personal um, experience because most of my music right now is being uh, yeah. mixed and done in Zimbabwe by Zimbabwean producers. And because yeah. of uh, the, uh, the shutdown of a lot of um, the things in Zimbabwe uh, and also all over the world, it has made it difficult for me to finish my song that I wanted to release last week. And I've oh. been stressed the whole week trying to figure out how we can have it finished. And finally, it's finished, but, uh, you know, imagine the stress. So already I can tell you that um, it has slowed down um, uh, production of everything that we want to do, the communication, the, the targets, everything we wanted to do on time. And uh, secondly, I was supposed to have a performance last week, of course, here, and it was uh, cancelled because of, of uh, the coronavirus. And that money was supposed to bring me to Zimbabwe in May. Can you believe that? Uh, yeah. yeah, because I still have to finish uh, one or two videos that I've been shooting. So 
Of course, my mm. team in Zimbabwe now has half products that they have to keep for a long time until I'm back in the country uh, oh, wow. to finish the video. So uh, basically, there's a lot of disruptions when it comes when it, to our work and our progress. Um, and also because now, as artists, we like to plan ahead. We have venues yeah. we were trying to book. We have um, artists that we have recruited for different um, uh, uh, shows that we want to do in Harare and also in the country. But all that has come to stop. Imagine if you say to somebody, look, I need you for a show in June and maybe in July. This person already calculates their money. Like, I'm going to get this money, I'm going to get this money, and I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. All those plans have gone into vain because now we cannot plan anymore. We're just stuck in a situation which we don't know when it's going to end. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, coming to, to you, Innocent, um, how has your industry, the tourism industry, been affected? Uh, because I believe people are not moving, so that should be quite a setback on your on your part and what you deal with. Yeah, I mean, this is a, this was this is a major setback, and uh, it did not only start before the lockdown. That was on that was on Thursday. This thing is started. Um, around I think beginning of March or end of Feb when yeah. I was receiving more cancellations than bookings and uh, we had people who would come here let's say they want to stay for three days they had to stay here for one day and go back and when the first case of coronavirus was uh, reported in South Africa that's when it became even worse so it has uh -huh. affected a lot of things in this tourism industry remember in tourism industry you've got hotels uh, <clears throat> we also count even restaurants as well as part of tourism. Uh, yeah. We have got uh, a, a lot of things, man, that has just gone to the ground. And it's it's quite a tough situation for everybody who is in, who is in this industry in South Africa. We have packed all the vehicles. Um, we're just hoping that uh, we are not going to lose those things because if it continues for the next two or three months, we won't be able to pay for all those things. So we, we are hoping that, uh, you know, government will do something or maybe there will be a vaccine for this um, coronavirus or at least yeah. a cure for it. All right, all right, yeah. Yeah, then uh, coming back, uh, uh, this is a question that I will give uh, to, to both of you. Uh, uh, for example, Jabreza uh, was supposed to launch an album for Koyo recently. Uh, first of all, it was supposed to be a venue thing, and then he cancelled that and said it was supposed to be online, but uh, he has since cancelled the online launch. Uh, do you think it's wise uh, for, for, for artists to do that? Because I believe that we, we are consuming more online things at this point in time. Was this going to be beneficial to Jabreza uh, or anyone else? Because I don't want to, to, to just put Jabreza in this board, but any other artist who's planning to, to, to release anything at this time, is it okay to release it? Will people consume it? Will it get the benefit specifically on the Zimbabwean market? Do we consume things online? Is there benefit from people uh, consuming things online, for, for, from artists consuming, uh, having their products being consumed via online platforms? Uh, okay. Well, I will start. Well, sometimes as a team, you sit down and then you look at the costs of the things yeah. you've been to actually do the actual album because an album doesn't cost two cents. And yeah. you know, when you release an album, you, you are looking at how much you're going to get back from the money you've used and also as a profit because it's a business. So when you yes. sit down with your team and then figure out that, okay, if we, are, if we can't do a launch where people can actually come and hear this album and maybe buy some copies uh, and get maybe um, uh, signed copies and, you know, take selfies with their artists, that is yeah. a thing that can boost your album all the way. You may probably never make that money after that launch. You may never recover yeah any money yeah. if you don't do the launch. And then if you do it online, uh, sometimes uh, you also look at the same thing, the cost, because online you can give it away and people will listen to it for free and they will love it, of course, and you are not sure when you're going to do a show next because this is coronavirus, which no one knows when it's going to end. So 
you have to sit and and for maybe they probably sit for a couple of days trying to figure out the best way forward but you can't put your 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 very important product out there without any confirmation of how much you get back also okay. in, in another hand i will tell you because i'm releasing a song tomorrow so all right um for me it's 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 beneficial because i'm looking at the type of song i'm releasing tomorrow it is a song that's encouraging people to stay with their loved ones to enjoy each other's company to you know love one another so of course that is perfect for people who are at home and doing nothing and when they see it online they love it and i'm going to put it on online stores and sometimes it's tough also because if you are in zimbabwe and no one is really buying anything online you are yeah. you not going to really um make anything if you just release your 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 whole album out there just like that so i think um you have to look at the situations of what is beneficial to me do i have an audience that buys music online do i have an audience that is going to pay to watch me online on a certain platform that they can actually pay and because it's Zimbabwe, we don't really have platforms where you can actually pay and then get access to a certain site and then actually pay. Because banga niwa nima visa card. Banga niwa no kwanza kuti even ne visa card before. Today I want to come and watch show yako. And yet there is Netflix and chill. So you have to yeah. really uh, look at that on a broader point of view. Is that beneficial to me? Is that beneficial to my album? Is it going to be accepted? is am i going to make something of course people are going to accept because yes we love japresa we love his music we love all the artists that are coming out we love their music but yeah. what is what is he going to get back is the question let's say nda kupaipa mbangu masmak mimi but in nini nda gadra ba mundi cha wani so it's all right it's a whole process yeah because if you give us the album we share it on whatsapp trust me yeah, to not share and we we'll love it and to not spark yeah. but because we don't know when corona is going to finish it's going to last for the next two weeks or three weeks or one month but atina we don't have a confirmation yeah. so yeah. it might it might make an album and then it will go down the drain people will enjoy it out there but he benefits nothing from that of course we go to somebody else and what 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 how does that benefit him as the creator of the art all right yeah all right uh, come to you know so not the same question are your, your thoughts on the on that uh are artists supposed to be given out uh, look uh i do agree with uh everything that uh, Rimba has mentioned uh look if you are to release an album i'm not an artist but uh i also think that uh it takes uh a lot of time uh it, it uh, sometimes it takes even a year for an artist to release yeah. an album yeah. and uh you, you wouldn't want to gamble with such uh you know uh such creation you know to create an album then you gamble yeah. with it and putting it online during this time where everybody else is concerned about what i'm going to eat uh yeah. am i not going to be a victim of coronavirus what's going to be uh, what's going to happen to my daughter who's living in the places in the uh epicenter of you know for the virus yeah. so it is very very important for i don't know how much it takes to release uh, a single song uh but yeah. i think if you are to release a single song like we are going to do tomorrow uh people might end up i mean especially if you're using youtube because i mean youtube is very popular to everybody even those who are back at home maybe you, you have a lot of views on youtube you end up getting um the i don't know youtube man or whatever i don't know what you call it guys so it's yeah. i think it, it was a good thing for jab razor not to release the album during this time of the year during this time of uh coronavirus i think the first time when he said you released the album on launch album on, online he did not really because we were not really affected in zimbabwe at that moment uh, I think you yeah, to make you turn a reverse gear like you know what guys I can't do this anymore because now everybody is panicking in Zim. So yeah, imagine yeah. if a lot of people yeah. who are going back to the raw areas 
And trust me, those people, their last scene will be today. Tomorrow, they'll yeah. know they won't yeah. be on WhatsApp. So that's it. That, yeah. that is a sign that those people they won't be af- they won't be able to have time in uh, a time to uh, to be going online and all those things. So it's it's a it was a very very uh, intelligent move from Japraiser and his team not to release yeah. his album via via online. So he just needs to wait until this whole thing subsides. Uh, then yeah. until everybody is confident that you know what Corona is gone, only yeah. then he can release his album. We can still enjoy him anytime. He's our guy, so yeah. we yeah. can wait. Yeah, uh, definitely. Like, tomorrow we'll be viewing your video, your music. So don't don't change your mind. No. We'll listen to it. <laughs> yeah, we hope it's one song. It will, it will not change much, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it won't change much. At least we still need to know that uh, Vimba is still there in the scene. Yes. And I also want to encourage artists, you know, people with influence, you know, if they can be online more, talking to their fans and trying to instill that, you know what, this thing is very, very serious. So yes. it's also important for you guys not to be once in a while, I mean, go on Facebook Live, tell your, your your followers, your friends that, you know what, guys, stay at home. Because staying at home is the only thing that is going to save us from this um, virus. Because this virus does not travel, but we transport it from one place to the other. So if yeah, we yeah. stay at home, yeah. people need to be told. So it is platforms like this that will educate our people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and then now maybe we can talk about misconceptions. Uh, I don't know what, what misconceptions on Corona that you guys come across. Maybe if you can raise that, get to know that uh, no, this uh, is not true. These are just people kind of raised about others. But there are so many uh, of them out there. Um, I saw something recently. Someone said if you steam with the if you virus, it will, it will die because the virus does not survive in high temperatures. And um, by people actually resharing that, and it was actually going viral. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. So those are some of the things that that we, we kind of live and want to put. So I think maybe that new innocent, and we're going to be by these conceptions. You know, it's um, uh, it's it's very sad that um, uh, we still have people who think that um, they are immune from this virus. Uh, people think that as a black person, your immune system is very high and you won't be able to uh, contract the disease. Or maybe if you contract the disease, your immune system will flush it out immediately, which is not true. Uh, yeah. This disease is not. I mean, it does not. It's not. It does not choose whether you're black, you're white, or you're Chinese. Uh, people they fail to understand that this disease is started in a in a in a, in a continent where there is a man who is white skinned. Those are Chinese people. So, yeah. it, from there it went to Europe, with America. Then later on, it came to us. So comparing the numbers, uh, I don't think it's a, it's a wise idea. It's a, it's a miscalculated idea. You cannot count uh, saying that because it has killed more whites than blacks. Yeah. Remember, Africa, yeah. uh, this thing, it came into Africa, I mean, like at a later stage, we don't have so much, we did not have so much cases a uh, few weeks ago in many countries in Africa. Our first case yeah. in South Africa here was yeah. in this month. In Zim, it, it was also in this month, Botswana, same wise, you know. So it's uh, it's it's actually sad to see people who are thinking that we are immune to this disease. And the other thing also, age, they think that um, they can easily flush it out, you know, because I'm still young and my immune system is still good. So I can easily, you know, uh, flush the virus out. So those are the, some of the things that uh, you hear on the streets and people, they also say it's a disease for the rich people. So, I mean, yeah. it's a sad man. So our, our people really need to be educated. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Yeah, well, I think we've seen a lot of videos of people running away each time somebody coughs, like somebody sneezes or, you know, uh, somebody comes up and, and yeah, does something funny or, or licks their hands or something and then you just turn away. Um, the experiences I've seen so far, because so, so we are to go to the supermarket, only one person at a time to get into the supermarket, and they are saying you only get into the supermarket with a trolley, which is sanitized. You cannot get in without a trolley or with a basket anymore. Just compulsory for a trolley, and they make sure which they spray, sanitize, and everyone. You know, you see. Yeah. So um, I think uh, people have been educated enough about um, coronavirus. It is just the yeah. ignorance I'm worried about. Because so far, we've asked each other, who has a relative that is corona? If I ask you to say, do you have a relative that is corona? You'd say no, and you would say the same. So, but because you have no, none of your relatives is sick, so you become this yeah. ignorant person who says, yeah, it's just the white people creating this thing. They want to, to release what 5G, what, what. So they are making everybody else ignorant and concentrating on the virus, blah, blah, blah. It's just a lot of ignorance. So I think that's the most I'm worried about. If we say misconception, we would say there's a lot of misconception about a lot of diseases. Some people yeah. think which cause oh, 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 you have TB, you see. But yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it, it have to be tested to be to put it on you. Do you actually have it? Because you might not yeah. have it. It might just be one cough that just or you just had something on your throat or something. So I think if we if our ignorance, if we surpass our ignorance, we'll be able to fight the disease without having to to think too much about it and also um, be open to knowledge and knowledge is power. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Then we, we come also to the fact that people are panicked at the moment. Uh, what can be done? I think sometimes panic uh, moves up. Like they say, yeah, that's disparage. You know, desperation can lead you to make desperation a desperate move, which might be very fatal. Um, now people panicking, people think, uh, especially with the shortage or the vaccine, like it's not the country that is I mean, people they went to the next side to see because uh, they thought it was going to be stop the next day. People who spend that weekend party or that is a, a platform where they might actually spread. So, what can people do? What can you tell to to go down, not pass down, just go through the step down? So how we can buy and safeguard ourselves and every safeguard make sure that the panic level are lower. We cannot avoid panicking. How can we try to show that the NSO is going into this lockdown? Um your you were breaking a lot, but uh, I'm trying to just catch from what you said. Um, yeah. There's nothing much we can do to make people not to panic. Because yeah. panic uh, is the natural that comes when people are affected by something they know nothing about. This is why I'm, in I'm insisting on testing this power. Because yeah. Imagine if you have a knowledge of how you contract a certain disease. You will not yes. panic when you see it. You will just find a way to deal with it because you have knowledge of how to deal with it. So I think right. uh, panic mostly comes when you ha when you don't really have knowledge. Um, uh. I'll tell you what happened to me uh, yesterday. I had a friend who visited me and uh, he was hiding his coffee away uh, yeah. coughing in, in the in the bathroom 
and coming back. So I didn't notice that he was actually coughing. And then when he sat next to me, he started to have this very dry cough, which is one of the symptoms, of course, of, uh, uh, of coronavirus. So the first thing I didn't, I didn't see it. I was like, oh, it's just a cough. And then the second time it, it came, I looked at him like, you're sick, guys. Unfortunately, I think Innocent has left us in the, maybe it's network and I think we're left with a few minutes. Maybe to round up, how can yeah. people try and survive 
and, and survive through this. We cannot use condoms. We cannot abstain. We cannot uh, find ARVs to this. This is something that is different. Uh, how can we try and survive uh, Corona? There is no cure for it, but we still need to try and make the best with the things that we have. And how would you suggest we people try and survive? Yeah, I think I'll look first at the at, at us as artists in Zimbabwe. And I think we need to use the media to our advantage. We need to use as um the social media, the the every Real freedom is yeah. Okay, let's go. Eagle Radio. New voices amplified. Eagle Radio.